salvation. This is a call for salvation. If you do not know Jesus, this is a call for salvation. A call for salvation. Respond to the call for salvation. If you don't know the Savior, this is his presentation. It's been too Hello, welcome to Voices in the Wilderness. I'm Reverend Maria. The Bible tells us that John the Baptist was a messenger, a voice in the wilderness calling to his generation to repent. Jesus also said to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repenting simply means to regret your sins, to change your way of thinking and to change your conduct. Our own generation is in trouble. We too need to change our conduct. At a national and international level, we're plagued with wars, rumors of wars, terrorism, drugs, the breakdown of the family, moral confusion, and numerous other societal ills. Yet we believe that with God, there is hope. We can live our lives by a higher standard and influence our families, our communities, and the world. Joining me today, I'm excited about this program because three of my best and dearest friends are here with me today. Dr. Marie Chapin, Dr. Teresa Phillips, and Dr. Lisa Kohut. Welcome. It is an honor and a pleasure to have you back on our show because you've been on our show a few times. And it is always such a pleasure and an honor to have you here because, like I said, you are inspiring. You, I know you've inspired me in so many ways. So I'm just so thankful that uh, to have you three here. So it's a really treat for me. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. It's, it's an, an honor. honor. It's, it's an, an honor. honor. We love you. We love <laughs> yes. you. You're awesome. So what I'd like to do is have each of one reintroduce yourselves. Tell me the name of your ministry and tell me uh, the, your city and the, the main mission of what you, uh, of, of your ministry, of what you do. Okay, do you well, start? I'll start. Okay. I'm Marie Chapian. Dr. Marie Chapian, um, and I am the head of a ministry called Wings of Wellness. It's a body, soul, spirit ministry. I'm passionate about the total person. And I'm located in Southern California in the San Diego area. I'm Dr. Teresa Phillips, and I'm the senior pastor of Praise Ministries Church in St. Charles, but I'm also the editor and founder of Chicago Prophetic Voice. And our the crux of our ministry is to help people be restored to their original intent so that they will know that God is for them from the beginning to the end, from Genesis to Revelation, that God is a complete God and will never leave or forsake. Amen. I'm Dr. Lisa Kohut, and my ministry is Positive Outcomes Consulting. It's a counseling ministry in Mount Prospect. And my passion in that ministry is it's actually a counseling uh, ministry where I'm helping people to heal and to connect with their potential, their full potential and uh, their purpose. So that's that's my passion. Uh, so that's wonderful. And it's a pleasure to wonderful. be here. Thank you. And so it is just, um, like I said, an honor. And you three are wonderful ministers. I've had the pleasure of being in different ministry situ situations with every one of you. And I know that you carry healing, you carry God's love, and really that is what's going to set people free because today we want to speak, we want to talk about uh, self-esteem of women and how to set some of our sisters free because you know there are a lot of women out there hurting, mm -hmm. men too, but today we're going to focus on our sisters. Uh, they're hurting and there is hope, isn't there? There is great hope Absolutely. and so we, we're going to talk about that today. So, uh, Marie, let's start with you. I, when you, because you are a, a woman that wants to bring the sisters, the women, into that sacred, holy realm, and mm -hmm. you are always so joyous and you celebrate. Mm -hmm. So talk to um, the women out there as to how they can get to be in this, um, that, this holy realm that you speak mm -hmm. about in, some, in mm -hmm. so many of your conferences and books. There comes a point as women when we stop seeking our personhood outside of us, ourselves. You know, the, the four of us have had to come to this reality as leaders, as, as wives, as sisters, as mothers, as, as grandparents. And we have to, we have to come to this, this point of finding our, our personhood in something bigger than ourselves, in throwing everything into, into the person of God. And yeah. when, when that happens, 
uh, we stop looking for favor in the world. We, we stop demanding that um, you, you know that that you approve of me or that uh, my husband do this or that to make me happy. You're supposed to make me happy. You know that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. We let go of these these demands. Yes, and that comes from a, from a place of knowing your true identity. Mm -hmm. And I know mm -hmm. you teach a lot on, on mm -hmm. uh, identity of women and, and, and self-esteem, and you counsel many, many women. Yeah. When you counsel them, what is it, is there like a, do you see like a common, uh, let's say, root cause mm -hmm. of why women struggle? Yes, one of, the, um, one of the greatest things that comes across my phone mm -hmm. is women in ministry. Mm -hmm. and their place of ministry in a man's world. It's very difficult sometimes to be a woman in ministry in a man's world because you see the people responding to the male evangelist differently than they respond to a woman evangelist. I mean, they'll run to the altars and they'll do a whole lot of things and the woman will get up there and she'll feel less than. Mm -hmm because she has seen the response somewhere else. But the, what we have to teach each other is that God gave us an intent. He created us in His image, but He created us as a different vessel so that we could reach another society mm -hmm. called women. We have to reach women, and as women, we do reach out and we do minister to men. But the society of women, the sisterhood of women, is, is so lacking today because it's become so competitive. Oh, yeah. And it's become demonstratively competitive. You know, let me just say it this way, if I might. My ministry is better than your ministry because I've done this. No, 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 no. There's no place for that. There, the, yeah, there should not be any place. No. But it's no. predominant. Mm -hmm. It's predominant. So when I get the phone calls and I hear, like just recently, I had a Lutheran uh, pastor call me and she's like crying on my shoulder. And I said, it's your ground now. You take it. I said, the old guard is gone. It's yours. And she said it was so liberating. Mm -hmm. Because what we need to recognize is that God gave us in His Word. He said, the very ground in which you step. He did not say the very ground in which a man steps or a woman. He mm -hmm. said, you. So it's your ground. You take it. But take it in your capacity. Mm -hmm. yes. Not in the capacity of a dimension of how someone else will look at it, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. as the capacity and the vision in which God gave God you. Gave us, yes. And that gives that gives us a completeness because we as sisters, because yes. I just feel like we are God's girls. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, that we are the sisterhood of, of Christ. Mm -hmm. yes. That we have to learn to complement and to complete one another. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. You're gonna yes. carry something I don't carry, but I'm not gonna compete with that. You're carrying counseling. I'm probably going to call her sure. <laughs> you know? yes. and say, hey, I got an issue. I have too yeah, many exactly. tissues. Yes. Exactly. Because we all need that. But we have to and be able to be safe with one another. You're absolutely right. And mm -hmm. what you said, I'm going to call her. I think we all mm -hmm. have, uh, we're all part of the body. Yes. And we all have different gifts. And uh, of course, my uh, my dearest and most darling friend here, Lisa, because I just love this girl so much. Mm -hmm. She is a wonderful counselor. I mean, I have seen her. We've been in ministry together, where we are both ministry uh, to women, and I see her style, and I have seen women being set free, yeah. and being set free. Mm -hmm. but, so, you. what would you say, Lisa? Is is that do you is there like a root cause to uh, to what you see going on in, in the body of of uh, female believers? Yeah, and you know, I think this is this goes across the board, but I think the main it's it's kind of the theme that we've been talking about. It's it's that separation. Mm -hmm. It's it's almost as if uh, we're walking around or people are walking around as if we're all separate and there's no there's not that community. And I think sometimes mm -hmm. when there's not that, you know, we're talking about this connectedness, and the connectedness mm -hmm. is what we weren't designed to live in isolation and to be separated. And mm -hmm. so I think the key in any healing is to connect, you know, and to find that place of connection. I mean, God didn't design us to, to have self-esteem apart from Him, right. or to have an image apart from each other. Mm -hmm. And so as we're even here and we're talking about, you know, self-esteem and image and, and healing, healing begins with community and with and, and even mm -hmm. understanding who we are because we're not we don't have an identity apart from 
one another or apart from God. Oh, God. Sure. And I know so one of the good. things you were, you were talking about how, you know, maybe some ministries judge each other. I mean, Elisa again, and I hate to just keep on this, but I know that you are one person that she has no, she doesn't judge mm -hmm. people. And I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. I catch myself saying, and I'm, I'm looking at Lisa and she does. So where does that come from that were uh, the importance of not judging people? Well, first, I, I wish that I have perfected that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I haven't perfected that. But, uh, but it is definitely an intentional goal intentional. In, in, in regards yes. to judging. Because I do, you know, uh, God says in order to enter the kingdom, you have to have the heart of a child. Mm -hmm. And children don't judge, you know, they're, until they're taught. But they will... Any other kid will come in and they'll play and they're, and they're not looking at all of the, uh, the shortcomings of each other. They're really accept, and I, and I do believe that if we had, when we have, because I believe that this will happen, when we have a body of people who are just not judging each other, number one, it'll create that safe zone mm -hmm. where people can, where we can go and we can share and we can release. And number two, it will really create an anchor you yes. know, for so I think the judge, the judging because we judge ourselves probably more than anything, and then we judge ourselves, and then we judge others, and and when mm -hmm. we're just walking around judging one another, which I think the church mm -hmm. gets a real, you know, has a real bad rap for that. And compare, okay. and comparing Women because comparing compare. is a form of judging, you know, right? Yeah. Can you imagine Jesus going to the 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 wedding at Cana and saying? <laughs> Do I look fat in this robe? I mean, right. you know, I mean, it's just, you know. Or can you believe that they don't have enough wine now? Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right. And, you know, my word, he's got a better robe than I do. I mean, yes. we, we tend to um, compare. And, yeah. you know, when you got this call from this Lutheran minister, I was thinking, when we stop the demand for approval, you know, as ministers, as leaders, as female leaders, mm -hmm. if I can be free of yes. stopping my need for your approval, mm. yes. so I'm put down, I'm a woman, women should be silent in the church. Oh, has anyone ever heard that before? Yes. Yeah, I was just yes. reading about that on the way here. Oh. And the headline of that scripture actually means order in the house of God. And when That's the right. scripture is brought out about a woman should be silent, it's not about preaching. It was about the order of the day that mm -hmm. women were separated from the men during the services right. and they were yelling like, yelling. hey, butch, what does that yeah, mean? Right. Exactly. You know, and they were disruptive. And so when Paul said, be, be silent, quiet. they forget the other part of the scripture says, and if they have any questions, let them ask them at home. Right, yes. not, in the, not, not in the synagogue. Don't interrupt, just right. ask when it's right. done. Right. And I find that to be something that we all need to learn to do is to quit interrupting. I'm, I'm good at interrupting. I mean, mm -hmm. let's just face it, we're all people and we, yes. all, we all have issues. But the truth is, the truth be known, that if we really want and I do in my heart, and I know you do too, if we really want to see the harvest that we hear prophesied about, yeah. that there's gonna be a really great revival, that it's gonna come through the region, it's gonna come through America, there's this great revival. The only way it's gonna come is to be safe places for people to run into. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus said he's the safe yeah. place and people run into him and be safe. And I'm not saying that we can all walk around, and I, I, I mean this, we can't walk around and say we're all little Jesuses. No, we are little people with a big God. Yes. And mm -hmm. he does so much more through us than we give him credit. And what we do is we're so busy looking at how big he is in someone else forgetting that yeah. he's that big in us. That's mm -hmm. right. That it, it doesn't have to, anything to do with how long we've been saved. It doesn't have anything to do with it. it. Doesn't you know? We all have degrees here, and you're studying yeah. for yours. It's not about that. We earned that through time, but it didn't mean that made God any bigger. It just meant that we learned something that we now have to impart to someone else. Mm -hmm. And if we can communicate by telling yes. people we're here to help you become a better me. Right. In other words, if we're yes. going to be leaders, the best mark of a leader is to make one better than yourself. And then yes. I think if we have that mentality, we'll start seeing a great harvest of souls. Absolutely. And yeah. it's like yeah. what Lisa was saying about judging. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Dropping judging. How are we going to have this great harvest mm -hmm. if it isn't coming from the hearts of people who are so in love with God oh, right. Right. and so aware of who we are in Him? Right. I'm not going door to door because it's my, you know, I, I have to do that because my 
my pastor tells me to. I, I do an outreach or do what I do in ministry because I am loved by God. I am mm -hmm. coming from a place of being cherished mm -hmm. and it just bubbles out. And I think that's, that's the key too, when it bubbles out, because we have Jesus inside us, and that's really our true identity. When we there have we Jesus inside of us, when we're conscious of it, because mm -hmm. we have him in, but sometimes we're not thinking about it, mm -hmm. we don't practice his presence, we mm -hmm. walk a little taller, mm -hmm. we, you know, we breathe a better, we, we're, we have that joy. And I think that that is really what our sisters, uh, that uh, people go through depression, they go through all of these things, and my heart breaks, and I'm sure that you all mm -hmm. counsel women in, mm -hmm. as, as I do as a pastor and everything. And, and I just want them to have that, the joy of the Lord. And I know that we've talked about that intimacy with Christ, <clears throat> excuse me, mm -hmm. how important that is mm -hmm. to really spend time mm -hmm. to get to know our God, to get to know Jesus, because once we have that intimacy, then we start to recognize our, our, our true identity. Absolutely, because out, out of the intimacy with him, I think, you know, it's like whatever relation, our relationship is like with him, it flows into our other relationships. Mm -hmm. And so without that, you know, sometimes, you know, people are trying, we're trying to do it the other way, fixing mm -hmm. the, these, but, you know, he says, love him. Yeah. with all of our heart, soul, and mind. Yeah. And then he connected us with our neighbors. Mm -hmm. And then he said, and love one another as, yeah. love your neighbors as yourself. Yeah. And so it was like, there's this beautiful connection of yes. unity. Yes. And I agree with you that it's yeah. that. And, and um, you, you know that that is my passion, to yes. see unity in the body yes. of Absolutely. Christ. That is my passion. Yes. And I want to see the sisters be united oh, in the body of Christ. Yes. And so, I, I mean, it, it's an amazing thing what God has for all of his daughters, mm -hmm. right? Encourage yes. one another. Encourage yeah. one another. Champion each other and love each other. Oh, I love it that you succeeded at what you're doing. Oh, oh I'm yay. so crazy, but yes. I love what you do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I love you, you know, that you're a pastor of a church and I can learn so much from you and yeah. champion you and just love you to pieces. Right. And and Lisa, with right. your counseling and everything, I mean, and, and you, of course, the definitive television host and yes. pastor. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's just a thrill it's a thrill to see our sisters move forward and those mm -hmm. who are see, stuck yes. to mm -hmm. see the beauty in yeah. them. And that's, you know? what, yeah. that's, I think, what we want. And I know yeah. that uh, the three of you uh, encourage, I mean, you're such encouragers, and that's really what we want to do to, to tell our sisters, yes, you can do it. Of course you can. Mm -hmm. Of course you're great. You're awesome. You can do all things. Yeah, you know, if, if sometimes they think like, um, you know, nobody likes them, nobody loves them. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. God loves you. So I mean, what? Th yeah. <laughs> so what if nobody likes you? Yeah. So my personhood, that's the whole point that I was trying to make. It, my personhood does not depend on the approval of people. That's right. It really, really can't. Mm -hmm. If and when you I'm know to that, live fulfilled, I can't be a victim. Mm -hmm. And isn't that, that comes free? also by revelation. Yes. That mm -hmm. comes by being in a place and time in our walk where what someone says or does no longer affects us because not that we've become hardened, but because we know who we are in there Him. Go. Our goal yeah. really as leaders in the body of Christ and you know, it's taken me, you know, I'm, this is my 24th anniversary of, of this church. And, mm. you know, but it's taken me many, many years to get to a place where one of my goals is to literally pull the God out of you to give me something I don't have. And, isn't and that, that's, that's, that's awesome. imperative. That's you know, that's awesome. I want to pull the God out of you. If you have that's a right. gift in you, darling, Ooh. I'm going to be really, really upset if you didn't. If I look out in the congregation and I see that God was moving on you, I will, I will nail you after church, and I will say <laughs> you did not use your gift. And you know, and I'm going to say this: we're in the season of Yoel. I'm not even sure okay. if I pronounced it right, UL or whatever, the Hebrew season, where the king tabernacles in the field. Okay. This mm -hmm. is where there's literally a demand upon our gifting and what he's given us that he wants a return. Yes. But the key is, is that he always now tabernacles with us to put a demand on a return of what he's given us. 
not I'm not talking about just the finances. I'm talking about I need yes, what yes. he has in you. Of course. I need what he has in you. Yes. I want to hear more about those angels. I'm sorry, I gotta hear them. <laughs> I, want, I, I want to call you. I want, I want, I want Absolutely. because I want the fullness of God so that I can make the proper Absolutely. decisions. And what that's do you really, mean by true. What do you mean by tabernacle? Explain that where, to the, the, where God tabernacles his, with his people, where he dwells among yes. his people. He mm -hmm. dwells in us and now we tabernacle with people who are non-believers and literally the bible right. says that you know he will give us the very place we step our foot so if i walk into a grocery store which really my husband does that i i go into the clothing stores <laughs> he goes into the grocery stores i go into the clothing stores but when while i'm in there they're under the covenant of the almighty well, and, and that's a good way to think about when you're walking, because you carry Jesus and you say the Absolutely. same thing. You, you always say to, uh, to you, you're walking in that, that uh, holy realm. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's, I think, part of being, having that identity. If women really know how special, how loved they are, that they carry, they are the tabernacle, they are the temple, and Jesus lives inside of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would change everybody's attitude, wouldn't it? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I don't know, though, that people, I think probably what a lot of people are saying, yeah, but how do you, how do, you, how do, you, do, it? do you do it? Okay, you know I mean? <laughs> uh, okay so uh, what, one, one thing that they can do, please. Well, I'd, I mean, for me, the number one, and, and even this, at one time, I didn't know how to do it. It's really spending time with him. You know, we, when we have friends or any relationship, we spend time and we really nurture that relationship. And so how do you spend time, you know, with the creator, with, you know, with creator? And, but I would say that, you know, just, and I'd say even start just by asking, how do I get to know you? You know, getting on your knees, how do I spend time with you? I've, for me, it's, it's been a period of developing, you know, through Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, developing how to do that. But mm -hmm. I know I, we all start at different places mm -hmm. and, and Teresa, I think we have to appreciate think? that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think if we could learn to appreciate that there are so many different levels and realms of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one group will call it a realm and other people will call it a level and other people will call it a place. Right. Or, you know, I'm not in that place. You know, if we could just learn to recognize that not everybody's going to walk the very same walk mm -hmm. of someone else and mm -hmm. embrace where they're at. So, okay. okay. I, th I think embracing, you know, you have the newbie the brand mm -hmm. new Christian and the one who's been saved 50 years. And you know, you've got a span in there of different knowledge mm -hmm. and different levels. And then you've got people that are walking in different levels and in different places, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And we have to learn to embrace that because each one of that, each one, each realm, like I can, I can walk in a, in a realm and have somebody brand new, born again, spirit filled Christian walk up to me with their excitement and bring me right back to the joy of the Lord that I may not have had that day mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they're so excited. And so we have to learn to draw from one another, mm -hmm. not try to push each other aside, mm -hmm. but to draw from one another. And I think if we could learn to do that mm -hmm. as somewhere in right. the body, like you know, mm -hmm. if we, we, we got to quit worrying about the, the minuscule things. If Jesus is over the door, mm -hmm. it's okay. Mm -hmm. So I think what you're saying, I mean, we're talking about how to. So you're saying how, what I'm, what I'm hearing is accept that place where you're at. So we're telling the, our sisters to not to get all frustrated or, or, right. or flustered or right. whatever, but, but have that joy where you're at and then the Lord will get you to the next level. So, so as you said, you, you spend time with God, you, you, uh, you, you accept where you're at, and how about you, Marie? What, what, well, uh, <laughs> happiness is a skill we teach ourselves. <laughs> it doesn't drop on us from the trees. <clears throat> I remember when I was going through a particularly dark period of my own life, and somebody came to me with the scripture verse, you know, mm -hmm. weeping lasts for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I was up early. You know, mm -hmm. I thought, where is my joy? It's going to come knocking mm -hmm. on the door. So I didn't realize it comes from within because mm -hmm. I'm teaching it to myself. Okay. I am teaching myself. I am saying I'm not going that wimpy way. I'm not asking the world to be my my mommy. I am not asking the world to. I'm not asking my husband, you know, <clears throat> to be to be God. Right. 
I'm not asking the world to take care of me, you know, and living this kind of, oh, you know, I just don't know, you know, what I'm supposed to do, you know, which end of the pencil does one use? I mean, I'm not, <clears throat> you know, because I remember my mother told me, you know, boys don't like girls who are too smart. Mm. Well, I remember that. Mm. Yes. Then my girlfriends and I, we became raving idiots. But <laughs> when, we were, when we were together, we were solving the problems of the world. Absolutely. You know? so, so I think we have to be at peace with our intelligence, yes. be at peace with our genius, yeah. be at peace with the glory that lives yeah. within us, and stop asking the world to take care of us. Yes. yes. And I also think too for your your own self. That's well, well, with, because with, it's through not Christ. about yes. us. Right. 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 About right. Him. right. Yeah, it's right. about him. And I think one mm -hmm. of the things that we have to learn to do, and it's a day by day process, but you have to learn to encourage yourself in the Lord like David yes. did. Yes. Yeah. He did. You know, sometimes when it is just plain falling apart, right. you just look up and you say, you know, God, it's just plain falling apart. Yes. And He'll look down at you and He'll say, Yep. Yeah. It sure is, but I haven't left. Yes. Right. And I right. think if we could get to that place where we realize that he hasn't left in spite of the circumstances, mm -hmm. I think we can learn to grow. And these yeah. are all practices. Mm -hmm. What you're saying, they're all practices. You're deliberate. Skills. And, yes. Yes. and what I think, I think sometimes is that, that uh, women, we tend to run our mouths in the sense that mm -hmm. we don't say the right thing. Scripture says that we have to speak the word. We speak the word, mm -hmm. but not only speak it, but believe it. Draw it from us. Yes, we're women of God. We are uh, We are made in His image and likeness. That alone, mm -hmm. I mean, just to realize that we're made like God, that which is of God is in us. Mm -hmm. We have His essence. If we yes. knew that, I mm -hmm. mean, that is just that blows me away when I, I think about it. it. Yeah. Right. If we got it here, and if we said it here instead right. of, oh, I can't do this. Oh, right. I, you know, I'm never going to learn how to do this. I right. mean, you hear that, and you just want to, like, sister, I love you, but I want to smack you. The holy smack. The holy smack. Quit saying that you can't, because with God, you can do all things through Christ that strengthens right. you. I and think it's knowing, too, that knowing and just accepting that we are loved and accepted by him. I think that's mm. that's a struggle that a lot of people and a lot of women have is, oh, there's no way that you love and accept me, and therefore there's no way that I love and accept myself. And so I think knowing that we are loved and accepted just as we are, just as we are, mm -hmm. and, then, and then going from there because God meets us where we are. And so yeah. embracing that love and that acceptance, that's what gives us the, uh, the energy, the, the drive energy. to go on. Could you believe our time is up? Our time no. is up. No. Embracing so that embracing, embracing the yeah. operative embracing, word. Embrace. Mm -hmm. so embrace. Embrace. Thank you. Embrace. 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 And thank you, my viewing audience, for joining us today. If you want more information about our program, please contact me at marigold1 at comcast.net. Check out my website, www.voicesinthewildernesstv.com, or call me, 877-991-4800. Until next time, I wish you good health, success, spiritual, gra spiritual uh, grace, and embrace. Embrace yes. and know that Jesus loves you. Mm -hmm. So you've got everything. If God's in you, you've got every single thing for life and godliness. If you do not know Jesus, this is a call for salvation. A call for salvation. Respond to the call for salvation. If you don't know the Savior, this is his presentation. A call for salvation. This is a call for salvation. If you do not know Jesus, this is a call for salvation. A call for salvation, respond to the call for salvation. If you don't know the Savior, this is his presentation. A call for salvation, this is a call for salvation. If you do not know Jesus, this is a call for salvation.